Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much to the organizer and uh, to all the communities. It's a wonderful conference that we're, I think everybody's enjoying very much. Um, so it's an unbelievable pleasure for me and a great honor uh, to introduce tonight to all of you, uh, Professor Yoshihisa Yamamoto. I was an extremely lucky PhD student to have um, um, Yoshi as my PhD advisor. <laughs> These were really great times at Stanford. I, I got to know him under the most horrifying circumstances, and that is the so-called Stanford double qualifying exams, <laughs> 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 where, uh, where Yoshi was one of the 10 professors that, uh, that had to ask me questions, and this is how I was validated to become a PhD student at Stanford. Uh, so he was an extremely um, kind, and generous despite my very, um, let's say, mediocre answers. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is generosity. I think that this is something that characterizes uh, uh, Yossi and it has been all these years at Stanford for me and for his entire group um, were an unbelievable source of pleasure. And uh, we started, it's because of him that I'm in the um, quantum cryptography community today. So we started our QKD experiments together at Stanford. We discovered ma with, an, with an empty optical table. Uh, we discovered many things. We worked back at the time at this differential phase shift QKD protocol, which we improved. Uh, and I think it, uh, it helped together with all the rest of the technology, of course, everywhere else. Um, so he was uh, an extremely visionary <coughs> PhD supervisor, um, and he remains an extremely visionary person with an unbelievable understanding of physics, which I envy a lot. Um, so, so I think uh, there is, it's a turning point right now in the quantum information technology. There's many exciting things happening these days uh, with many things, I think, challenges ahead of us. I think we have seen quite a few of them in this conference and uh, we're going to see many more in the next few years. Um, so I think the vision uh, of uh, Professor Yamamoto can help us a lot um, in uh, seeing better how to deal, let's say, with challenges in the next few years. Uh, so please welcome Professor Yusufisa Yamamoto. Thank you, Irene. First of all, I would like to thank the conference organizers uh, for inviting me uh, to give uh, such a prestigious uh, award to give it after dinner speech. Uh, and today I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, quantum technology, the, uh, but not QKD, uh, mostly quantum computing uh, technology uh, toward the future. And the first slide sort of summarizes the evolution of concepts are in this area. Are back in 1985, the, the concept of quantum parallelism was introduced. And this uh, quantum computing uh, sort of scheme are, uh, is based on the rotation of state vectors in closed system and the information is carried by localized spin one half particles. But unfortunately, the, any quantum algorithm is basically interferometer. So in order to uh, realize a quantum parallel such, a sort of a uh, carefully engineered entanglement uh, is required. Our, the entanglement is very fragile against the dissipation, so it must be suppressed by uh, quantum error correcting codes. Uh, uh, so the system is naturally operated at uh, cryogenic temperatures. And uh, 13 years later, the, the new sort of our, uh, concept uh, appeared, which is called quantum annealing. And it is based on adiabatic evolution of a ground state. Uh, but the information is still carried by spin one half particles. Uh, the uh, quantum parallel search or entanglement, is, uh, uh, really there or not, is still open question. Uh, and then another 13 years uh, later, the uh, uh, slightly different uh, concept 
uh, actually are uh, uh, appeared, which is called coherent Ising machine. At uh, this time, it is uh, based on non-equilibrium phase transition in open dissipative system. So it's completely different from the initial idea. Uh, information is now carried by non-local coherent light. So uh, uh, quantum parallel search and entanglement is not an engineered one. It is spontaneous sort of a uh, phenomenon are uh, emerged at the critical point of phase transition, which I will explain uh, shortly. Dissipation in this case is a computational resource rather than uh, something bad for the computing uh, a task. Uh, since it is based on coherent light wave, uh, the room temperature is actually promised uh, for this uh, type of uh, system. Uh, the quantum computing and the quantum annealing are basically the analog device. There is no intrinsic uh, regenerative functions uh, in the system uh, in order to sort of make a decision or pump out the entropy, the projective measurement is always required. Our coherentizing machine is hybrid analog to digital. At the critical point of phase OP or phase transition, it changes from analog to our uh, digital system is inherent uh, degenerative function. The next slide summarizes the required uh, resources for fold tolerant uh, quantum computers with the famous surface code. Uh, if we think of our uh, factoring of uh, 10, 24 bit uh, integer numbers or quantum simulation of relatively small uh, molecules such as alanine, the uh, required sort of application qubit is actually uh, 6,000. It's a uh, relatively small size of the system, but in order to sort of uh, make the machine uh, universal enough to cope, to implement those algorithms, factoring algorithm and the quantum simulation algorithm, we need the uh, Anchira qubit, and the uh, number of Anchira qubit is approximately uh, one order magnitude larger. So in the end, we need uh, 10 to the eight to 10 to the nine uh, sort of our physical qubits to be implemented and must be individually sort of controlled. Our, and the gate operation, must be also completed with a very high accuracy of 99.9% .9 or even higher. And yet, the computational time to get the final answer is two days to two weeks. So uh, it is very hard to predict uh, such a machine can be built in a uh, foreseeable near future. Uh, that's basically the background for the uh, new ideas come along. Uh, another important background uh, is the, uh, the target is also uh, sort of a changed from uh, factoring or discrete logarithm to combinatorial optimization. Our combinatorial optimization programs are ubiquitous in our modern life. The classic examples include protein folding in life science and drug discovery, our uh, frequency and computing resource optimization in wireless communications, uh, microprocessor circuit design, graph cut in machine learning, and the page ranking in social network. Uh, those sort of uh, combinatorial optimization programs often belong to NP hard uh, or NP complete class for which no efficient uh, classical no quantum algorithm uh, has been discovered so far. So that's basically the motivation. Uh, fortunately, those sort of uh, programs can be mapped to the uh, Ising model uh, by a polynomial resource. And the Ising model is the simplest physical model for describing magnetism and the spin glass. Uh, uh, for instance, if the uh, uh, two spin coupling constant J is positive, uh, two spins are aligned in parallel uh, to decrease the uh, system energy. 
or if j is negative, it is anti-aligned uh, uh, to uh, sort of a decrease the uh, system energy, and that's the ultimate reason why ferromagnetism and anti-ferromagnetism appear. Uh, this is a notorious problem. Uh, if we have uh, four Ising spins, mutually coupled by the uh, negative J, uh, we can satisfy so four uh, Ising coupling to decrease the energy, but the remaining two actually increase the energy. So uh, it is frustrated. And uh, in general, the, uh, any system, Ising system with frustration, uh, brute force search for 2 to N, uh, all spin configurations must be taken to find a real ground state. And as shown in the next slide, the, uh, this is a, a sort of a summary of computational complexity theory. Uh, we have a class P uh, that can be uh, solved in polynomial time by the uh, modern digital computers. And then our a bounded quantum polynomial is here. And above that, the non-deterministic polynomial NP, NP complete, and the NP hug actually exist. And uh, indeed, a three-dimensional Ising model belongs to the hardest class, NP hard. And uh, uh, it was uh, shown theoretically some time ago, uh, quantum computing and quantum annealing cannot really overcome the exponential scaling of computational time for those NP uh, families. Uh, with that uh, introduction, uh, this is a plan uh, for my after dinner speech today. Uh, I will first uh, uh, quickly review the uh, background of uh, uh, this effort. Uh, they are parameter on computers. Uh, emergent computation at criticality and the OPO phase transition. And then I will introduce the concept, principle, and the implementation of coherent Ising machines. And then uh, show you uh, two sort of uh, three uh, experimental uh, results uh, at Stanford uh, National Institute of Informatics and NTT Laboratories. Uh, then uh, I will move on to the uh, numerical war study, benchmark study against NP hard max cut problems. And uh, if I have a time, uh, I would like to uh, discuss bri very briefly uh, secure information storage and the computation on uh, homomorphic encryption. And then conclude the, uh, the talk uh, with the concept of coherent uh, artificial brain. The, uh, Japan's uh, first digital computer with a solid state device was called parameter on computers. And uh, H. Goto was a graduate student at the University of Tokyo when he invented uh, parameter on computers. And his uh, a mentor, a professor, uh, Hidetoshi Takahashi, was a uh, uh, distinguished theoretical uh, physicist uh, in Japan. Uh, he was uh, published the first master equation for optical mazes in back in 1958, and uh, also uh, published the first paper, seminar paper on squeeze the state in 1965. So one of the founders of my own field, experimental or theoretical quantum optics. Now. Our basic idea is to construct classical digital circuit, uh, three input, one output, uh, uh, ferrite core digital circuit uh, using electrical or parametric uh, oscillators. This uh, computer was widely used in science and engineering community uh, at the University of Tokyo, but also were uh, several uh, Japanese are uh, uh, electric industry farms, uh, industrial farms also developed a few generations of uh, parameter on computers. But you know the rest of the uh, history. The uh, parameter on computer was beaten, sadly, by the transistor-based digital computers because they are 
firstly very slow, and also were uh, power hungry. Uh, and uh, the topic I am going to talk today uh, tonight is a sort of a return match uh, after 60 years by replacing electrical parametric oscillator by optical parametric oscillator and replacing a classical digital circuit with quantum network and uh, introducing a new concept of uh, computing at criticality that we would like to uh, challenge for the CMOS technology once again. And, uh, that's basically the, the, uh, what I'm going to talk about. Uh, the second background are a, a subject is uh, emergent computation at criticality. This slide uh, sort of uh, uh, is a numerical simulation of a two-dimensional Ising lattice. Our Ising spins are aligned in two-dimensional square lattice, and if the uh, system temperature is higher than the critical temperature, uh, thermal fluctuation energy dominate over Ising coupling uh, energy. Uh, so our uh, spin is completely random. Uh, on the other hand, if a temperature is lower than the critical temperature, uh, in this case, all spins are aligned uh, down. So ferromagnetism appeared. And at the uh, 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 critical temperature, uh, the, uh, something very strange uh, sort of pattern emerges. Uh, uh, even such a simple uh, Ising lattice model shows the uh, sort of our uh, 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 unique feature of uh, a second order phase transition. Uh, it will allow more efficient communication between distant spins, uh, maximum information storage, the uh, entropy is maximum, and the highest susceptibility for an external input. And all those sort of elements uh, of the criticality uh, suggest that there is some, something the, uh, very useful for uh, new type of uh, computing machine. And this was actually uh, uh, the first uh, discovered by brain scientists, not the physicist. And uh, they sort of uh, claim that the macroscopic order, which eventually leads to cognition and consciousness, uh, is seemingly formed in uh, human brains, uh, which is biased at the critical point uh, due to synaptic plasticity. And the uh, uh, lower panel actually shows the uh, uh, histogram of uh, spatial correlation function uh, for uh, numerical simulation of Ising model. And as you can see that only at the critical point the correlation uh, length actually scales uh, polynomially, the power law or uh, scale invariance uh, character. Uh, this unique feature was actually reproduced by human brain under the so-called default mode. This is our uh, functional MRI, F uh, uh, MRI data. And uh, uh, those sort of uh, experimental uh, sort of uh, results actually uh, guide them to conclude uh, this sort of a uh, bold uh, sort of conclusion. Uh, this is the uh, editorial note uh, published uh, in May of this year. Uh, physical review uh, letters editorial uh, note uh, actually pointed out this point. Uh, I, will, I will read this uh, re relevant uh, part. Near the critical point, uh, correlations between neurons would occur uh, across all scales, leading to optimized communication. In addition, susceptibility would be uh, greatest there, making the cortex uh, most uh, responsive to external uh, stimuli. Uh, this will be a frontier for interesting new physics, unlike anything we have seen before. And so there is some opportunity for physicists and electrical engineers uh, to explore as uh, a future computing machine. <coughs> uh, we are not interested in the wet system or living uh, 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 neurons. We would like to construct such a machine 
uh, based on uh, optical parametric uh, oscillators. What is this device? This device is very simple, just like a laser. Uh, between two needles, we put the second order nonlinear crystal. And then uh, second order nonlinear crystal is pumped by the here two omega pump feed. Then a nonlinear crystal absorb one photon at frequency two omega, and the simultaneously emit two photons at the frequency omega. And this degenerate uh, optical parametric uh, oscillator is known to produce a squeezed vacuum state uh, below threshold, but at above threshold, uh, the oscillator actually are, uh, uh, through spontaneous symmetry breaking, take uh, zero phase oscillation mode or pi phase uh, oscillation mode. Uh, interesting enough, at a very critical point of this OPO phase transition, this zero phase and the pi phase uh, state coexist as a linear superposition state. This can be easily seen that if we make a projective measurement along p directions by optical homodyming technique, then our measurement result features a clearly constructive, destructive, constructive, destructive interference between zero state and the pi state. And this sort of our, our superposition are of zero state and the pi state realizes the desired quantum parallel search for combinatorial optimization problems. And moreover, if we mutually couple those OPOs and form the OPO network, then our quantum entanglement is formed. Uh, and so there is some a nice element there for this system. Uh, on the other hand, if the system across the critical point and goes to the oscillation at the above threshold, then the system becomes digital, namely the degenerative function of OPO are either zero phase or pi phase originate from the interplay between the phase sensitive amplification and the gain saturation and allows to stabilize our Ising spin up or down against the noise and the uh, mechanical fluctuations. The uh, actual idea uh, is shown in this slide. The system consists of one master oscillator and N slave oscillators. And as I said, Ising spin up or down is represented by zero phase or pi phase oscillation mode in the case of OPO. Uh, in the case of laser, uh, it is represented by right and or left circular polarizations. In order to implement the Ising Hamiltonian, we can just uh, insert horizontal polarizer or phase shifter, and then that's it. Uh, if you further need the uh, DC magnetic field, uh, in other words, the uh, Zeeman term you would like to implement, then uh, you can injection lock the uh, with a master oscillator with appropriate polarization or phase uh, control. And uh, in this case, the Ising Hamiltonian is mapped onto the overall loss of the laser OPO network, uh, which find the optimum polarization phase configuration with a minimum loss by a birth and death of photons uh, over 100 to uh, 1,000 generations. The system generate uh, 100 to 1,000 photons and loss, lose, it, lose them by the loss, and during this process, a system spontaneously find the lowest loss uh, phase configuration, which is actually corresponding to the ground state of the Ising Hamiltonian. Uh, let me uh, recap the operational principle of coherent Ising machine uh, with this simple uh, uh, picture. Uh, here, the uh, system energy is plotted against all spin configurations. All spins are up to all spins are down. Uh, there are two to M uh, different spin configurations, and each spin configuration have different eigen energy. And this energy landscape is plotted here. The task of uh, our computer 
is to find the ground state with a minimum uh, uh, energy. And the celebrated, the simulated annealing start from the high temperature and uh, gradually decrease the temperature. And then the residual thermal energy actually uh, help to escape, uh, help the system to escape from those local minima. And if the cooling uh, speed velocity is slow enough, eventually the system is actually trapped to the ground state. Okay. So in this uh, sort of a limiting theorem, the simulated annealing will find the ground state uh, in the extremely long computational time. Uh, quantum annealing is different. The, in order to uh, use thermal hopping energy, uh, we can apply the transverse magnetic field, uh, then a spin precess. And this transverse field again gradually decreases, and then the quantum mechanical tunneling is switched off gradually, and then eventually ground state is found. And those two approaches, the, the bottleneck is basically the number of local minima increases exponentially for hard instance in NP programs. So uh, in order to overcome those sort of exponentially increasing number of local minima, the uh, computational time must scale exponentially. Uh, that, that's basically the, uh, uh, the source of the problem. Now, we would like to avoid those uh, sort of uh, problem. And for, the purpose, uh, for that purpose, we sort of converted the system energy to network loss and put the gain medium into the network. And the gain means a negative temperature because a population inversion is there. And we increase the gain over negative temperature from minus infinity to minus zero. Instead of cooling the temperature, but in, uh, we heat up the system. Uh, to minus zero temperature. And then the system loss and the system gain balance and the close to a threshold. Then a linear superposition state between zero state and the pi state is appeared in each OPO. Then two to M different spin configurations are prepared in a linear superposition, uh, even in such a open dissipative OPOs. And this sort of a point only the gain is equal to loss, so that the instability happens, which eventually leads to single mode oscillation. And after stable single mode oscillation, we can just read out uh, this uh, sort of uh, uh, single mode. And that's basically the uh, idea. When our, I, we explained this concept, often our people asked the following question. The differential loss or differential energy between ground state and the fast excited state also decreases exponentially as a program size. But this is not true. The, uh, uh, those sort of energy difference is actually constant if the coupling constant J is actually fixed. This is a case for a relatively small uh, N equal 20 Ising program uh, there are one million uh, spin configurations, and there are numerous uh, local minima, but there are only two degenerate ground state. And their energy difference is actually fixed by the Ising coupling constant J. So if we sort of uh, increase the temperature uh, from our upward, then our, uh, we won't miss uh, those two degenerate ground state. This is sharp contrast to our numerous uh, and dangerous uh, local minima uh, for simulated annealing and quantum annealing, uh, basically. Uh, implementation uh, is a different story. We cannot implement identical OPO uh, uh, optical parametric oscillators of 10,000, 100,000, 1 million, and uh, it is impossible to actually uh, implement connecting optics of 10 to the 12. Uh, so here, the idea is basically a time division multiplexing and the quantum measurement feedback. Uh, any optical parametric oscillators are actually formed 
uh, in common uh, fiber-based ring cavity. Our Modlock laser uh, pump pulse uh, sequentially uh, sort of excite the second order nonlinear crystal. Then we have any independent uh, optical parametric oscillator uh, pulses, which is sequentially detected its amplitude and the phase by optical homodyne detector. And based on the measurement result, uh, we can compute the coupling term in digital electronic circuit. And based on that uh, information, we can modulate amplitude and the phase of the feedback pulse, which is taken from the pump laser and injected back to any sort of a pulse. In this way, uh, we can actually decrease the number of oscillators from N to 1 and the number of connections uh, from N squared to 1. Uh, so that's based, uh, relatively simple to implement our uh, result. Our, the first implementation of this idea was done at the Stanford University. And this is the experimental setup, the first uh, coherent Ising machine. The ring cavity uh, consists of four meters, a free space a ring cavity. Our round trip time is a 16 nanosecond. And the pump model of laser, fiber model of laser, has a repetition period of four nanosecond. So we can generate four independent uh, OPO pulses. And in this case, we implement three optical delay lines. Uh, delay line one with one bit uh, delay time introduces clockwise nearest neighbor coupling. Uh, delay line two, uh, two, uh, two bit delay introduces diagonal coupling. And finally, the uh, delay line three uh, with three bit delay uh, introduces our counterclockwise nearest neighbor coupling. In this way, a complete graph can be implemented. Our computational result can be detected by the simple differential phase detector, and this is a measurement result. Uh, when we uh, implement NP hard Ising program with n equal to four, success probability to find a ground state is larger than 99.9%, .9%, which means that we run the system 1,000 times, never fail. Uh, so our success probability is 3.9. Uh, we recently, the uh, NII people uh, extended this sort of a, a machine to N equals 16 by replacing a uh, uh, crook frequency of the pump laser from 250 megahertz to 1 gigahertz. And again, for N equals 16, uh, 1,000 run, uh, no failure. So the success probability is 99.9% .9 or higher. Uh, if we use brute force search, the success probability, the worst uh, uh, success probability is 38% and 0.01%. So there is some improvement uh, experimentally confirmed. Our NTT people actually implemented their uh, large scale system uh, in their fiber-based uh, ring cavity. Now the uh, cavity is uh, one kilometer uh, optical fiber and the uh, clock frequency, model frequency of the pump laser is now two gigahertz. So that there are approximately 10,000 uh, independent OPO machines are actually running. And those pulses are actually detected by a homodyne detector. And this is a homodyne detector output without mutual coupling are the at the critical point, the system pick up either zero phase or pi phase uh, randomly, and the histogram really shows the 50-50% random choice of the uh, oscillation phase. And right panel uh, shows the dynamical behavior. At the, uh, this is a round trip, uh, 100. Uh, we actually switch on the pump laser, then our uh, system actually start from vacuum state and the, form the squeezed vacuum state or anti-squeezed vacuum state and then bifurcate into either zero phase or pi phase. And from here to here, it is about 80 round trips. That is our computational time to get the uh, desired result. 
Now, how good this machine uh, should be? Uh, we actually uh, performed a benchmark study uh, using the here, uh, numerical simulation. Our, the, the program is called MaxCut. Uh, this is our uh, famous uh, Petersen graph with n equal 10 vertices. Each vertex has three edge, so it's a cubic graph. We are asked to cut this sort of graph into two uh, subset in order to max maximize the wedge of the cut. And this program, uh, I will skip the detailed explanation. The here, uh, if we are, uh, replace the wedge eight by the negative Ising coupling constant, the, the ground state which minimizes the Ising energy, Ising Hamiltonian, is incidentally the solution for maximizing the cut for the given graph. So it is basically a very uh, suitable target for benchmark study. Our, this is our, our uh, benchmark study result. Uh, if we increase the number of vertices from n equal to 4 to n equal to 20, the number of uh, possible graph uh, increases also 1 to 510,000. We have to solve all of them because we don't know a priori which particular graph is hard. And the most of the graph out of 510 graph are easy. And only five or six graph are really hard. And this table shows the success probability to find the ground state uh, for all those sort of our, uh, lands. And uh, as you can see that with increasing the uh, graph size, the uh, success probability monotonically decreases, which is a bad sign. Uh, but if the network is actually uh, uh, biased at the critical point of OPO phase transition, not at well above threshold, the system enjoy almost constant success probability, or at least up to n equal 20. Uh, this number can be compared to the uh, success probability of 10 to the minus 6 for brute force search. So there is our, uh, the uh, distinct advantage of this uh, approach. Our, if we go to our much larger graph, the uh, ground state we cannot compute uh, because it takes too long. So uh, we can actually uh, use our semi-definite programming, which is, this is actually the uh, popular algorithm, which has 97.8% uh, accuracy guarantee and widely used in uh, modern computer science. And uh, if we solve n equal 800, n equal 4,000 complete graph, and uh, with the same approximation uh, our accuracy by simulating the annealing coherent Ising machine, the result is shown here. And the computational time as a function of program size is summarized here. SDP actually scales uh, program size n to the power of 3.5. And the simulated annealing scales uh, n squared. And for the problem size of n equal to 20,000, which is a relatively small problem uh, for computer scientists, the, uh, it takes 20 days and 100 seconds. If we believe this scaling uh, and scale to uh, 100,000 problem, which is still a small problem uh, for practical application, it takes five years and one hour. Uh, Coherentizing machine, as I said, it is basically turn on delay time of uh, OPO network. We switch on the pump and wait for the steady state is reached. And this is approximately one millisecond and independent of the program size. Uh, let me switch the gear uh, in the, uh, and talk about our, our, our fully homomorphic uh, encryption. This is a very brief summary of cryptography, and uh, it is said in the text, uh, 700 BC, the uh, first uh, crypto system uh, called 
a scutary appeared in Spartan, by, introduced by Spartans, and then uh, 50 BC, uh, Caesar ciphers uh, used by Roman Empire, and then a famous enigma by German uh, military. Uh, uh, for the last uh, 2,700 years, the uh, uh, cryptography had been simply a technique for protecting the information in communication channels. Sir. And this is because the, uh, uh, most of the uh, application area is actually the military, or at most uh, diplomacy. Uh, but around 1970, the internet came along, and uh, everyone would like to communicate uh, without sharing the secret key anymore. So uh, uh, seven years later, the famous RSA was invented. And now the, uh, everyone can use public key to encode, but only one person can decode with uh, uh, private key. Uh, so uh, the really important evolution happened in 1977. Uh, but then the second um, sort of a uh, wave came around 2000. Uh, around 2000, the uh, cloud computer came along and everyone would like to store the uh, precious data uh, in public domain server. And they would like to use this uh, server as a computing machine too. Then the cyber attack becomes a serious problem. Uh, the, uh, and then uh, Gentry came in 2009 uh, introduced uh, fully homomorphic encryption, uh, which can sort of allow the uh, secure storage and secure computation simultaneously in public servers. So now it is becoming a secure platform for information storage and processing in public servers. Different users can store information securely, compute on the encrypted ciphers, and decrypt computational results. Such a future is hopefully coming soon, but the reality is actually the fully homomorphic encryption still costs very, very expensive. Uh, one bit in plain text costs, say, 800 bit uh, public key. So it's awfully expensive. Uh, we are interested in the, in in the encryption uh, method based on uh, unitary uh, sort of our, uh, uh, matrix. Uh, what coherent Ising machine does, as per all, it is basically uh, sort of this eigenvalue problem with uh, Ising Hamiltonian. And if we simply multiply arbitrary unitary uh, matrix from the left, the resulting equation uh, tells us that the new Hamiltonian UHU minus one has a new uh, energy eigenstate U of phi M. Phi M is an eigenenergy state eigenstate of the original Hamiltonian uh, with identical uh, eigenenergy. So, the, so the Hamiltonian changed, the ground state or eigenstate changed, but the eigenenergy spectrum is preserved. Uh, so, so we can uh, sort of decode our computational result uh, if you know the matrix U. Uh, and that's basically the de decryption. Uh, so. What kind of a unitary matrix can be used? Uh, that's an open question. Or, uh, if we introduce a bit flip, there is some problem. If we add permutation, uh, there is some problem still there. And how about embedding random graph? Uh, we are currently exploring all those different uh, sort of possibilities. But the uh, final sort of our, uh, system we would like to establish uh, someday uh, is is summarized in this slide. Uh, suppose a user would like to store the precious plain text in server. Uh, he can actually uh, uh, encrypt by his own unitary matrix. And then the uh, coherent Ising machine actually compute on this sort of a new uh, Hamiltonian and uh, return this sort of uh, encrypted uh, state. Uh, a server manager never know what the phi m is because uh, he doesn't know the unitary matrix. Now, the, uh, this sort of a communication is uh, truly classical because uh, uh, 
information which is transmitted from user to the server manager is basically the real number JIJ matrix. If the third party client would like to uh, get only the computational result, the user actually are uh, sort of issued two different unitary matrix and the second encryption and the client decryption and so on. And in this scenario, uh, server manager and the client cannot access the program data uh, JIJ, but the only client can, uh, can only know the their, uh, final computational result. Uh, so uh, we, this is the last slide. I would like to uh, sort of uh, summarize my talk. The uh, last autumn, the Japanese government sort of launched the new sort of a uh, national project called IMPACT. And uh, uh, we would like to sort of uh, uh, establish the uh, brain-like uh, computing uh, network. Uh, it is well known that in human brains, the optimum neural network is formed each time, depending on specific uh, missions. This is again functional fMRI are uh, sort of a data. And uh, uh, what is the, uh, our dream. Our dream is basically such a network type a sort of a, a computing machine. Our central computer is a general server, standard server. It accepts input and compute and uh, provide output if the task is not too hard. But if the task is combinatorial optimization, uh, then it, the task goes to our coherent Ising machine. Uh, if the task is a secure storage or computation, it should go to homomorphic Ising machine, as I explained uh, tonight. Uh, I didn't talk about the uh, two new, uh, another two new uh, machines. There is another a similar machine called coherent XY machine, which is good for uh, community detection, modularity, or associative memory, or coherent Heisenberg machine, which is good for quantum simulation. And with that, I, I should stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you.